Hello children, how are you all? I hope you are doing well with your studies at your homes. I welcome you to this yet another class of English for grade 6. Children, you have been getting a lot of knowledge since your birth. There are many languages that you have heard, although you do not understand those languages. But certainly, those languages are there and there are many people who speak those languages. But do you know that the basic unit of a language is a word, a word which when multiplies and arranged well creates the language. These words they create our storehouse of knowledge. Now that storehouse when it is created it is very important that we express ourselves through those words. So that expression takes both the mediums whether it is the input or the output. Now, you may have a lot of knowledge, the knowledge that you have got through those words, but then you have to express yourself through those words as well. Our today's topic or I must say that this is a poem. This poem written by Mary O'Neill highlights the importance of these words, the words which are not only to be understood, but they have a great importance in expressing ourselves. These words can create magical effect upon the audience or the readers when they are used properly at the right place at the right time. So, with this importance in mind, the writer has written this poem for us. Now, let us go through the poem. The title of the poem is very apt that is the wonderful words. So, first of all let us have a brief introduction of the poet and then we will go through the poem. So, as I told you that the title of the poem is the wonderful words written by Mary O'Neill. Let us first have a brief introduction about the author Mary O'Neill. Mary O'Neill was born in Ireland on 3rd August 1879 and she died in the year 1967. She was an Irish poet and dramatist. She wrote this poem to highlight the importance of words and their role in beautiful expressions. So, now let us enjoy the poem first. I would like to read the poem for you. So, the title is The Wonderful Words. Never let a thought shrivel and die for want of a way to say it. For English is a wonderful game and all of you can play it. All that you do is match the words to the brightest thoughts in your head, so that they come out clear and true and handsomely groomed and fed. For many of the loveliest things have never yet been said. Words are the food and dress of thought. They give it its body and swing and everyone is longing today to hear some fresh and beautiful thing, but only words can free a thought from its prison behind your eyes. Maybe your mind is holding now a marvelous new surprise. As you can see that the poem is divided into two stanzas. In the first stanza, the poet begins by saying that we should not let any idea or thought die or wither away just because we do not have the command over the language required to express it. According to the poet, English is a wonderful language using which you can play with words all the time and you can produce 
beautiful expressions using it. You can use the language as a game through which you can produce different kinds of expressions. The only thing required from the users of the language is that they have to match the words with the brightest thoughts in the minds. This is how we can attach the sentiments of the mind with the words that we express. By doing this, the words come out clearly and flawlessly with the intended meaning and they do not leave any confusion for the listeners. The most important thing is to look for and select the correct and right words to express our ideas clearly. You must never think that you cannot do such things. When the words come out, they must be handsomely groomed and fed. It means that the words and expressions must be fully matured and nurtured before they are spoken. The writer feels that the words which we speak must be filled with the proper meaning and expression required for creating the desired effect. We must try to do this because otherwise many of the loveliest and beautiful things have still not been spoken in this world. So, words help us a lot in expressing what we feel deep in the heart and in creating great and noble ideas. When the poet says that words are the food and dress of thought, he means that the words serve the thoughts in two ways. They are first used as the source for thinking because we think with words. Secondly, words provide us the required expression to communicate the thought. They provide us that flexibility which gives a great variety to the language which is spoken. According to the poet, everyone in the world wants to hear something new and fresh. Words provide that novelty to the thoughts and expressions. We must never think that there cannot be any new expression or thought process. We must always believe that everything is possible in this world of words. The poet wants to say that the words need a free flow and through them we can free the thought from the prison behind our eyes. It simply means that we need to understand that if we use the words judiciously, we can bring out and express the thoughts in the proper manner required or expected. Thoughts or ideas are imprisoned in our minds and it is only the words which can set them free from that prison. It is always possible that the mind holds many surprising ideas and thoughts. Even such ideas may be there which may surprise us because we have never used words properly to express those thoughts earlier than 
this time. So, dear children, the idea of the poem is quite clear that we have to understand the value of the words which we use in our day to day life and this is how we can create the desired or even a surprising effect upon the listeners or the readers. Now is the time to enhance our knowledge of words through an interesting vocabulary building activity. For this, I have chosen some words from the poem. The words which I have selected are shrivel, groomed, loveliest, longing and marvelous. The first word is shrivel, S H R I V E L. Children, the sentence in which this word has been used in the poem is the first sentence of the poem. The sentence is never let a thought shrivel and die. The poet wants us not to let any thought shrivel, which means we should not let any of our thoughts shrink, wither or disappear. So, the meaning of the word is shrink or wither. The next word is groomed. G R O O M E D. In the poem, the poet wants the thoughts to be handsomely groomed before they are expressed. He simply wants that before speaking anything, we must brush or nurture that thought so that the output may have the desired effect. So, the meaning is brushed or nurtured. The next word is loveliest. The word itself is very, very lovely. To know its meaning, it is better that we go to the poem and try to understand what the poet wants to say. The poet said, for many of the loveliest things have never yet been said. It means that the poet feels that many of the most beautiful things have not been said till now, because there has been a lack of words with the people. So, the meaning of the word is prettiest. This is the superlative degree of the adjective and it makes lovely into loveliest. Children, longing is the next word which you would have felt difficult while reading this poem. The sentence where this word has been used in the poem is the place where the poet says and everyone is longing today to hear some fresh and beautiful thing. From the sentence itself, we can infer the meaning of this word. As the poet says that everyone is longing to hear some fresh and beautiful thing, we understand that the poet has used this word to mean to wish, as everyone wishes to hear such things. Children, the last word is 
marvelous m a r v e l l o u s marvelous it has been used in the last line of the poem the line is maybe your mind is holding now a marvelous new surprise here marvelous has been used as an adjective to tell the quality of a new surprise which may be held by your minds the quality is marvelous which means amazing or awesome after this discussion of uh, these six words i hope that you might have added these words in your vocabulary and you will use these words for creating some beautiful expressions in your life now is the time for the homework which i am going to assign to you so the first task which i want to assign to you is that you have to complete the following sentences in your own words the first sentence is do not let a thought shrivel and die because so what do you think why should you not let a thought shrivel and die what is your thinking about it and you can certainly take some ideas from the poem for answering this question next one is english is a blank with words that again blank everyone can play so what is english you have to think about it what is that quality of english that you can play with and you can what can you do next one is one has to match what this is what you have to answer and the last one is words are the now you have to find the expressions from the poem which are most suitable to answer this question certainly you should use your own mind also while answering them the next task is write the meanings of these lines from the poem in your own words now you have to write the meanings of these lines which have been taken from the poem itself the first line is all that you do is match the words to the brightest thoughts in your head i repeat it all that you do is match the words to the brightest thoughts in your head the second line is for many of the loveliest things have never yet been said for many of the loveliest things have never yet been said the third one is and everyone is longing today to hear some fresh and beautiful thing i repeat it and everyone is longing today to hear some fresh and beautiful thing the last line is but only words can free a thought from its prison behind your eyes i repeat it but only words can free a thought from its prison behind your eyes so children i hope you have understood the meaning of having a good store of words in the mind this is very important as the writer said that if we have a good store of words and if we use them creatively at the right time it will certainly help us in creating beautiful expressions amazing expressions which can surprise anybody in the world we will be able to be somebody who is a unique one in the world if we use the words in a judicious manner so with this hope 
I leave today's class and will meet you in the next class. Thank you.